Very good afternoon. Welcome to Tambarara. Not so live, but uh, we've got our special guest today, a man who's easily recognizable and well-known, Honorable Minister of Finance, Ntuli Ngube. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking your time to Thank you. be able to talk to us this, this afternoon. Um, joined by always is Jono Waters. Um, starting off, uh, Jono knows you from, from a while ago, mm. and you talked a little bit about the history. Um, I was just telling him in the car that... Uh, I think the last time I saw you, we used to spend about, of the hour, allocated 55 minutes talking about Indibeli history and yeah, then five minutes yeah. talking about... Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. About yeah, he's a love of history. I've almost forgotten. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's been a while since then, hey? Yeah, uh, long, long, long road travelled. Indeed. So in the interim, you've been in uh, the ADB, you've been at WITS. Yes. You've been... And but I, I, I was in Wits as a dean of business school mm -hmm. and then the dean of faculty. I mm -hmm. know that. Then I was headhunted to be vice president, chief economist of the African mm -hmm. Development Bank, representing Southern Africa mm -hmm. and East Africa. That's how it works. I lived there for five years, I lived through the revolution. Abidjan? <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't actually live in Abidjan, Abidjan, but I traveled there a lot. That's where the official head office is, but all over Africa mm -hmm. I traveled. And then I uh, then moved to Oxford as a professor, mm. and then ended up doubling in Oxford in private mm. equity, living between the UK and Switzerland. Okay. And finally, I'm, I'm here and back here. home. Yeah. Mm. So, so we, we thought that um, perhaps the best um, way forward today was to maybe because you've, you know, you, you're quite good at your professorship of. Uh, I just remember the time that we used to spend together. So what we thought we would do is like perhaps just you know, get to a sort of yes-no scenario when it comes to things, you know, sort of quick-fire questions. All right. You know, so um, just to start off. I think we'll blend them. So yeah. we can do some yeah. quick-fire yeah. ones and the ones where mm. we can talk a little bit more. But then I think the introduction mm. would be important for us to understand the role. Mm. You've spoken about the technocrat side, yeah. but right. there's a very big political angle yeah. oh, to your true. job. So how, how difficult has it been dealing with the political aspect of your job? Well, it's not difficult, it just comes with the terrain that uh, uh, often we think budgets are nice and clean financial economic decision issues, uh, they are not. The, you, you do you know, wade into political issues, it's got political aspects, you just have to deal with them. And in this kind of job you really have to understand but also appreciate complexity mm -hmm. and be able to, to see how everything fits in and so forth mm -hmm. and just work your way through it So, so consult as mm -hmm. much as you can. Mm -hmm. So a big political issue there would, would be the size of the civil service. Okay, and um, much speculation has been made about that. W how many people are employed? Well, well we currently have about uh, 400,000 odd people. 400,000? Yeah, okay. yeah, civil service. Uh, we have, uh, of course, let some people go, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in the last uh, few months. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think we are very comfortable where we are mm -hmm. in I terms of the size of civil service, yeah. of course. We're begin also beginning to enforce the retirement policy. It's all mm. part of it. Mm. But at the same time, we want to retain the best people. So we have got mm. this mix of trying to retain the best, also attract the best. Mm. Uh, at the same time, you know, uh, mm. rationalize out those we, sure. we don't think should, should, should be there. But I think um, it was Minister Chinamasa who said there was 565,000 people employed in the civil service. I mean, that's quite a drop. You can't have lost 160,000 people so far. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, also there was this issue of ghost workers, as mm. you know, and we're introducing a biometric system to make mm. sure that we can clean that up. You never know how many mm. there are. So that's but how many people process. do you pay every month? How many people go, uh, when when the payroll is for, for, for 400,000 people or? 400,000. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And is there, do you think that there's a need for another audit? Uh, well, well the, the biometric system will take care of it because mm. we are going to have everyone to re-register identify them, you know who they are. So that, that will clean, clean that up. So that's what we're using mm. in terms of a process for, for, for that. Okay. So uh, the monthly wage bill now is how much? It's, it's, it's about 400 million at the moment. 400 million. So annualized, that's going to be 4.8 billion on your um, recurrent. Um, your current budget is, but I mean, we're going to see increases throughout the year. You know, we're very comfortable with the with wage bill and in managing the deficit. Because also what has happened that our revenue collections have also gone up mm. and so has the denominator which is your GDP so we're very comfortable with the numbers uh, mm. uh, we will stay within why are you still issuing yeah. GDP uh, deficit okay 
Why are you still issuing TVs if uh, if um, Oh, that's if, just uh, too. Uh, too well, you've said to test the market, but yes. I mean, everybody knows that you can get a TV away. So, what would be the logic there? Uh, if you're running surpluses, that's what we no, say. No, it, it, we, we're not borrowing as government. Mm. It's really to test the market. Mm. But number two is to establish a yield curve. Mm. Yeah, but also, you've got some rollovers from the past. So, it's part of dealing with rollovers okay. and so forth. We're not really borrowing as government. Mm. No, no. What, what's domestic debt? At the, what's government debt at the moment? Okay, domestic debt at the moment is 8.8 .8 billion Zimbabwe dollars, mm. and is down from 9.5 billion mm. Zimbabwe dollars in last year, December 2018. Yeah, that's domestic debt. Mm. Maybe you should say it was it, it's it's 890 million US, which is down from 8 billion US. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, a nice way to put uh, it. There you uh, go. Given huh? the, the exchange rate, but of course, I think we are pointing the fact that. Uh, government and the people of Zimbabwe have made a saving through the currency uh, introduction, uh, which, which is which is which is correct. So so and this is for the taxpayer. Mm. So they, they, we've saved them quite a lot going forward in terms of what needs to be paid. So let, let's go to the currency. Um, so I mean you're a you're a you're a you're a wise economics man, okay? Um, currency is a function of what? Domestic liquidity? Mm -hmm. Would you not say? That, that's one of them. Okay, so, 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 yeah. so, so where we are already, I mean, like, I think what surprises people is the way in which we've moved from when you took over, you know, at around, well, it was one to one, but even on the parallel rate, we were at about 2.4. Correct. To 10. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's what's, and even your forecast before on inflation, I think you said we were at, it was going to stop at 80%, and we've gone past that, and of course it's driven in part by the, Parallel market pricing, Absolutely. but we've now we've now got to eleven to one, and if it is a function of liquidity, who's creating the liquidity? Well, there's a risk premium, so 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 there are a lot of variables that drive the, the, the currency. One is is your your deficit issues. So we're we're, we're not in a deficit position as of now. But uh, the Reserve other, Bank scenario is that leaving uh, I'll, aside I'll, that? I'll come to that. Okay. It, then is your your current account situation again? That's under. Then it's your domestic liquidity, mm. which also is not uh, growing much. If it, there's no monetization of deficits, so liquidity is, is, mm. is not, not growing. Uh, so, so then where is the demand coming from? I would say this is an issue of the risk premium. That players out there, they still associate our situation with some kind of risk premium, which they then mm. add on to where the currency Absolutely, is. We I believe that agree. the equilibrium should be somewhere between four and five to the US dollar in terms of exchange rate. But it requires but RTGS to buy that amount, you know what I mean? Like, Indeed. There, there, there has to be that, that, that level of liquidity, that creation to pay 10, because there seems to be no shortage of demand at 10. So therefore you query, this is what people in the, in the, in the market say, you then query, where did the one to 10 come from? The, the amount, that quantum that has gone to, to 10, where has that liquidity come from? And, and, I, I, and, and, I also have to ask, it's not about liquidity, it's about what you are demanding to be paid for your for US dollars hard currency, even given the legal, legal liquidity that you have. So it's, it's a risk, mostly a risk premium issue, because on a liquidity basis, the exchange rate is, is, it shouldn't be the 10, it should be half that, absolute, on a pure liquidity basis. But, 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 but on but the risk premium uh, basis, yeah. who knows what the market is adding, it's quite clear mm. that the market is adding quite a bit of a risk premium. And when we talk, the, talk to the players, that's what they are also telling me, mm. that the, 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 the high risk premium is partly the explanation for where the rate is. It shouldn't be at that level, in my view. Let's talk about the, the money at Forex, because that's what is mm. underlying this, this, this aspect of discussion. One of the things that is said often is that Zimbabwe doesn't have a shortage of Correct. resources. Correct. We have a misallocation issue. So one of the things is when we look at surrender rates, a lot of people complain about surrender rates. Would it not be better for us to have a fixed model for example, you give 10% of all the money that comes in to the authorized dealers, giving them capacity to be able to uh, have a market, create a market, and also take care of their own transactions. 20% goes to government. That 20% goes to government to take care of all the government needs that are required, because we must accept that government has needs for Forex, whether it's paper for passports, presidential travel, etc. There's a definite need. And then 70% that's not subject to surrender, but goes into a market pool, which is a genuine free market pool. Because when we look at what we've been generating in terms of remittances, generating in terms of our exports, etc. 
there is a lot to be said that a country of our size, relative to other countries, is actually generating enough forex. Absolutely. It's the model that's wrong. Absolutely, we're generating enough forex. Uh, uh, yes, we can argue that maybe it's the model, but also there's just an issue of confidence, that we need market players to be, to have some confidence in the financial system. And that confidence level is rising over time. It's really not going down, it's rising over time. Uh, and also, I think some of the the action we've taken using SI142, make sure the Zimbabwe dollar is a sole legal tender, is helping in building that confidence and the demand for domestic currency goes up. But, it, but going back to the surrender uh, rate issue, you can see that over time we're, 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 we're going to change that ratio and move closer to 100% as possible. But it will take time. Why? We still have other commitments in terms of uh, forex requirements. I've, I've understood the proposal you have made. It's one of the proposals. It's one of the proposals. Uh, but, but really the intention over time is to make sure that there is no surrender. <laughs> you know, there is 100% retention by the, by the exporter. That, that's a desirable position. But we're not there yet. We'll get there. We're going through a transition. Uh, we'll get there. Let's talk about confidence, Minister. One of the things about confidence is people being able to plan and have long-term understanding. I'm an individual, I insure my vehicle, I've insured my motor car in US dollars because I know that we're in an inflationary environment. I had gone and got medical aid in a US dollar environment. I've done that. There are businesses that have now premised their model on generating. We've had issues on loss of value, of pensions, etc. And then confidence, one day people wake up and there's SI 142 of 2019, all of a sudden we can no longer transact in US dollars. Do you think that brings confidence to people in the market? Well, not immediately, but over time. Why? Because we are in this pickle where we, here we are using a multi-currency regime, or let me say a mono-currency regime in the form of, of a US dollar, because it became that, a mono-currency mono regime. But we are still a shortage of forex. So what was going on here? How can I have a shortage of forex, but you are using the US dollar, a shortage of US dollars? But at the same time, you have got, uh, uh, you are receiving a lot of US dollars from the diaspora and so forth. So it's quite clear to me that that kind of situation couldn't continue. And, and government uh, was borrowing through the central bank, of course, uh, acting on behalf of everyone, to borrow literally for consumption. You could use a credit card wherever you're traveling, uh, and you wondered where that forest came from. Uh, it was honored everywhere. Uh, it's it, it really it's relying on borrowing. We're borrowing as, as, as much as two billion a year just to keep consumption going on the back of the hard currency. Look at competitiveness. Uh, it's quite clear we had lost competitiveness. You, you watch the profitability numbers this year going forward for exporters. You'll be shocked by the numbers. In and that's what just dollars? About. Because that's inflationary, yeah. is it not? No, no, no. no it's no. a function of inflation no, no, no. or a function of the rate. No, no, it's a function of the rate. But, right. but that's, how, that's the mechanics of the economics, mm -hmm. that you get rewarded because you have a weaker currency. That, that's what competitive means in mm -hmm. terms of currency. But, but, let, 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 me, let, me, let me finish this story. So, so the question is now, going forward, how do you rebuild that competitiveness? And, and, but also how to introduce monetary policy so that you have a full suit of toolkits for macro management. We had fiscal policy. And even then we ran double-digit deficits, by the way. That wasn't working either. And, and now we had lost the monetary policy leg. We've reintroduced it. You need both of those legs. And, and we've just done that. So, so part of that SI142 is exactly that, to introduce a full toolkit of macroeconomic tools in addition to making sure that we have competitiveness, we have interest rate policy. So, so certainly we have a, a, a fully functioning central bank or monetary policy. Can I give you a scenario, for example, we talk, just going back to insurance. I, I'm a big mining company, for example, has assets that they want to insure in Zimbabwe. The majority of those assets are US dollar real assets. They're going to try and get insurance outside. So they'll go to IPEC. IPEC will give them a dispensation. They'll be able to insure that those assets outside. That money effectively goes out of the country. Whereas internally, if we had a previous situation where some of that risk is taken on locally, those local companies are able to build up a US dollar book. We've now moved the money out. So I know as much as you're saying we want to retain money, some of those steps have actually resulted in outflows in money. If I want to get medical aid, I can now insure outside instead of giving it to a local insurer in US dollars. So some of these policies with an immediate date result in actual outflows rather than money coming in. Let's, let's stick to the, with the medical mm. issue. Uh, there is an Ambuya, uh, no, let's call it an old man, let's call Ambuya. They go to a hospital and they're told, please pay 20% of your bills in US dollars. 
where they're going, where are they going to get US dollars? That's right. a So what I'm trying to highlight is, in this game, there will be winners and losers. This policy shift, there will be winners and losers. And that, by the way, that is normal. You cannot have a policy where everyone is a winner. But the idea is that in the long run, everyone is a winner. And that, that's the idea here, that once you've got your own domestic currency, then everyone is, is a winner. Because the same companies will tell you now that they're saving on wages. They haven't told you that, by the way. That they are saving on wages. No, now. we know that. We know that. We know we, this is the they, same they thing as, yeah, as previous. Yeah. So, 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 so they, they might lose somewhere else. Maybe the country might lose somewhere else, but they, they gain in terms of wage wage service. So that's where part of the competitiveness is coming from. So, so, so if you add everything up, yes, there may be short term costs now, but in the long term, the whole economy will, will, will benefit. They, but they're winners and losers. In the short no, term. Let's no, wrap up no, currency. Nobody's, nobody's, nobody's lost on the fact that that companies score from that because they, we even talked about it this morning. But just to come back, if you talk confidence, from the time in which the delinking took place in February, when the rate was 2.5 to 1, it's now 10.15. Okay, that is the RBZ rate. You know, the parallel market's a little bit more. What bit of confidence do you think people have when the rate has moved that far in the year and it's still going 5 cents a day? I know we're trying to find out where the market is, but there's liquidity coming from somewhere Yes, there is a risk premium, and let's go back to 2016 when things were working before we ended up with, you know, the delinking, uh, the, the, the disentanglement between the dollars and the nostros. I think what people want to know is what happened to the money in the nostros? Why did the, why did, what happened to the nostro balances? Why did they end up becoming so depleted when it was working before? Um, I, 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 I mean, I, I know that's more a question for John. Yes, but, I think that's, but, more, but, that's a more but, um, detailed question. But I mean, you guys talk, so, and you must have had this conversation with them. I don't know, to be honest with you, I think, I think to be fair, that's an issue that we really should have with the conversations they have with the central bank and the banks. So you fiscal and monetary to, 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 to get into <laughs> the, the detail of some, some of the issues. Uh, but, 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 but really, the issues like this, if what you're observing with the exchange rate is more of a risk premium rather than a liquidity. I think people would disagree with you. Well, maybe, maybe they've, they've, they've additional information. I'm very happy to receive but why, the process. Okay, so when you see on Friday what happens, a few, some political disturbances, the rate's only 13%. That's a risk premium, okay? But when the rate keeps going out every, every single day since February, it's got to be a liquidity situation. Uh, as I say, you may have more, more information than me. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. very happy to receive this information. L let's just wrap up process it. Let's carry on. I think wrapping up currency, I think everyone's interested in this new Zimbabwe dollar. What, what, what is, what is, what is the, 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 the view, the vision of the new Zimbabwe dollar? Are there any specific policy targets you're looking at? Will it be uh, backed by anything? Will there be any inflation targeting you're doing? What is the ultimate aim to achieve? Because we've got our RTGS dollars, but we keep hearing about a new currency that's coming out. I think there's a lot of interest in that, and people need to understand what this new currency is. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you already have the Zim dollar. It's Our RTGS balance. Yes, it's in the form of RTGS bond note and bond coins. Right. Legally, you have the same thing, dollar. What it means is that we, we, when we are ready to the fiat equivalent, the paper equivalent of that Zim, Zim dollar, we will be replacing uh, some of the RTGS balances with the fiat Zim dollar, as well as the bond note uh, balances with the fiat Zim dollar. And we'll do that gradually. W but when are you going to start? The, the way to do it it has to be managed. So what you do, there's a normal process through which you, you drip feed liquidity into the market by, by, by increasing money supply. So that process is what a central bank would engage in, and that's what they're engaged with. It's not a matter of when, uh, uh, it's, it's when they think that liquidity ought to be increased because there's, there's more demand or there's need to do so in light, with, in light of inflationary expectations and so forth. Uh, so that, that's a, it's sort of a scientific process that they engage in in order to introduce it. So I can't give you a date. It will happen, but it will happen gradually. So, so we must expect M3 to grow <coughs> in the broader... In line with growth in the economy. In line with growth? Yes, it has to be non in line... Non-inflationary growth? No, or? no, no. It's not like, it has to be in line with the growth in the economy. Even though we've got a, a, a forecast for uh, the economy to shrink this year, we'll still have a growing money supply. Look, there is a liquidity shortage. We just we just agreed on that. So how there is the there's no liquidity shortage. There's lots of <coughs> ZWL out there. Uh, if you're telling me that there's no liquidity for, or shortage, you're not filling it. 
That's not what the, the industry and the banks are telling me at the moment. They're telling me that they've got a shortage. Uh, we, will, we will respond to the shortage in the fullness of time. We're not in a rush. Shortage, no rush. I think it's good to talk about shortage. Do you think that shortage is not created by government crowding out? You're talking about TBs that you're introducing. We've seen the inverted yield curve that's coming out. Average rates we're looking in the 15, 15, 16 percent range. We've seen the overnight accommodation coming in at 50 percent. And now we've got a situation where people are looking and saying previously they had the 7 percent bond with the RBZ. But now, it's all of a sudden, there's an interesting, attractive paper. So those bulk deposits that banks traditionally relied upon to lend out into the market, into the productive sector, they're now saying, well, why am I going to give my money to the bank and get low interest rates? Let's push it out to government, effectively, through TBs and Reserve Bank. So are you not a factor in crowding out that liquidity, crowding out the private funding that is needed for this economy to grow? No, we're not cr crowding out the private sector at all. Uh, on the contrary, we're doing the opposite. We are running a surplus at the moment, so we're not, in a sense, borrowing to finance government activity at the moment. We are only doing some rollovers, but also, you know, issuing treasury bills to to put in place a, a yield cap. That, 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 that's all. We're not crowding out the, the private but, but sector. Once you now, on the higher rate being offered now, mm -hmm. actually the market appreciates that because now they're able to swap lower yield paper for high yield paper, and that will compensate the inflation. Actually, that's a good thing. That, that's what is happening. But, uh, but I don't think at the push, moment there is lending makes it unaffordable for some businesses to, to borrow and makes things expensive. There's, uh, but, there's but an argument to yeah, say but, but, that but might even have an inflationary it, aspect, no, no, which but, but goes against normal economics. No, but that's normal when, when you have got some inflation that rates ought to go up. So what you, have, what you have now is interest rate policy is back in action. And that's what you want. You want your interest rates to go up whenever you've got the threat of inflation, either real or expected. And that's what is going on. But then they need so to the go market, to 200%. I'm sorry? They need to go to 200%. Are we sure about that? Because, you see, the thing about inflation, which is the, the reason why we decided that, look, year-on-year year year inflation is not helping us understand mm -hmm. what's going on. Because, first of all, the CPI index was rebased by Zimstats to 100 on the 20th of on, on February. So already, why? Because you're, a new, you're in a new currency regime. That, that, that's what will happen. So we, 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 we will understand inflation better on a month-on-month -month basis. Uh, much, much, much better. And in fact, if you take uh, uh, inflation, the average month-on-month -month inflation this year is about, what, 13% uh, uh, from January to now. Uh, last year, we averaged about about 6% or so. So, so clearly inflation... That, that gets to... Clearly inflation I mean, you, is higher. You understand the maths of this. That's no. your, you know, that's your, no, no, that's no, your doctorate. No, no, but clearly you inflation know. is mm. higher. Mm. So, so interest rates will be, will be higher. Mm. That, and and that, that's what they are. That's what they so, are. So and, 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 when you, and when you set interest rate, you have to balance between uh, engineering a recession by pushing your rates too high yes. and also you know, keeping your, your industry going. And, and, the, and that's the, the balance. And there is an argument to say that's rates have gone higher. And we've, we've heard you and the PS saying that you want to do this for a short term. Yes. But the immediate pain, and I think that's what you have to appreciate. A lot of people are saying when government policy changes, mm -hmm. and it changes so abruptly, the immediate pain causes confusion. And it also makes people less confident. And the thing that the government has had, and you can accept this is a new dispensation, you're a new minister in your role. The thing that we've suffered the most from is a lack of confidence. And when we wake up today or tomorrow and everything has changed, we get weary, we get worried, and our likelihood to, to be active players in this economy reduces. We're going through a transition, uh, uh, through a reform agenda. So there are going to be uh, you know, some policy changes, and that's what has happened. And those policy changes they have an impact. And then in making those policy changes, for some of them, we have to be very decisive. Uh, for some of them, we have to be gradual. Let's take the issue of the currency, for example. We started talking about a, 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 a new currency back in January. And I must say that when I was talking about it, you, even you didn't believe me. You didn't believe me. I, I was hoping it, it wasn't going to happen. But, but exactly. to, to, then me, it happened. To, to me, it's not yeah. a new currency. All you did was formalize and rename RTGS balances the Zim dollar. There was no new currency. Yeah, there was, yeah. because then we introduced the interbank market, which, oh. which then, it, because it's about value at the end of the day. What's in a name? It's about value. Okay. That interbank market then started, you know, putting a new, new value on the currency. So that's what's important. I, I'll just elaborate on the point that, that I think that whenever we make certain announcements and you, we don't act and, we're, and you must understand that we're trying to prepare minds, listen carefully. We, I always walk the talk. 
I always, every time I say, we will do this, we ought to do this, we will do this, listen carefully, we are going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then, then when I act, or when government acts, then you say, oh, but you are surprised. You should not be surprised. But it's because you did not believe us when we, when, when we, were, we were walking there. We we're trying to walk you towards the, the action that we're going to take. So, so, so but, but at the same time, we're going through a transition. And I want to say this, that really, in, in, in 1919, all the big, uh, kind of major macro decisions will be made. We don't want to make any more major decisions after that. And it should be like that. And we can't have austerity for more than a year now. Yeah, let's just go to that issue yeah, of absolutely. austerity, Minister. Just, just, just to conclude, betting man, okay, it's an unfair question. Give me a, a year end on the Zim dollar. No, I can't give you that. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Let, let's go to austerity. If I was in the market, I could. <laughs> But being a policymaker, I, I, I can't and I shouldn't. Well, but you should, be a, you, should, you should actually know the everything balancing out, M3, M1, you know. I, I have a, This is a mathematical, I, I, I have that's, a figure. that's your skill. Right? I, I have a figure. Okay, what's I have your figure? Skill. No, but I can't give Come it on, to tell you. We'll put a bowl of red wine on <laughs> <eyes>, it. Eh? <laughs> okay, let's just go back to yeah, austerity. Maybe some red wine will help. Which you, which you yeah, raised. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people would say, I'm going to give you a few pointers which you would are happy to talk about. Some would say there's no such thing as austerity. What has actually really happened is we've just had an inflationary increase, plus you brought in the IMMTT, IMTT. And effectively what you've done there is we all accept that a broader tax base is necessary. But what we're doing is we're now seeing an unnecessary burden on those who pay taxes anyway. Some people would just say, how about a flat tax, where we say we've got a tax, uh, intermediate money tax, transfer tax of 6%, 8%. That covers all the tax base that is necessary. That way you're capturing everyone. Instead, what we've now done is I'm a taxpayer, I'm a corporate, I'm paying tax, I'm paying POIE, I'm paying my income tax, I'm paying uh, QPDs that I've got, or my income tax, I've got withholding tax, etc. That is costing me, in addition to the, the, the transfer tax which you've introduced. So all you've done is you've just increased the tax on uh, companies, but government itself hasn't cut down spending. We know you talk about the 5% at the top level, but has government really cut spending across the board enough for us? Now, the, the austerity for prosperity, first of all, is about government itself, right? It's a gov government making sure that it can, you know, institute fiscal consolidation. And the phrase austerity for prosperity is nothing other than a re-expression re of fiscal consolidation. Have we achieved fiscal consolidation? The answer is yes. How have we done it? Through expenditure containment and managing the, the is that not just an inflationary pro issue? Pro pro properly? No, not necessarily. At the same time, we have uh, 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 mobilized more revenues, uh, whether using the 2% the tax and you know, or fuel well, tax. Perhaps, perhaps it's that's, it's yeah. part of the package. Yeah. When you do fiscal consolidation, you do both expenditure management as well as revenue collection management. Per perhaps the how two that's together yeah. then get you to a per fiscal consolidation yeah. path. And that's what we've achieved. Per perhaps that's how it's misunderstood because when the term austerity is used, and let's go back to the mm. Thatcher era, and of course that's probably where you're picking it from, okay, is when you use the term austerity, it means everybody suffers together. What That's why I don't, make, I think maybe your linguistic, um, you know, use of austerity is you're trying to say government austerity. But unfortunately what people out there see, especially when the a IMIT came in, they said this is austerity. We have the the fiscal side is the you know the, the people paying the taxes are the ones who are being forced to pay more. So you're actually talking about government being austere, but the thing is at the same time, on the, the revenue front it impacts everyone. Yeah, on, we, on, we're on, suffering on, as, we, as we're taxpayers. Suffering, yeah, yeah. You know, it, so as, as I've said again, what we're going through is this fiscal consolidation. Once we are in a position where we think we have things under control. And, and we will be there, we'll be in that position this year. We're looking at actually cutting other taxes so as to, to compensate and reflect that we're already, but, but, you know, bring yeah. us quite a bit for the 2% tax and other taxes. So we'll be looking at corporate tax to see whether should we be reducing or whatever, uh, VAT. We're looking at all of those. You have to, you have to balance. But I think you, like, you agree with me that even on the corporate side, we found that Zimbra, or when I came in, was owed 3.5 billion US dollars where VAT, pay, uh, pay YE was collected but not remitted. And then you have the informal sector, which was not uh, paying taxes. So the 2% the uh, tax became necessary mm -hmm. to deal with, even with the formal registered businesses were not paying their taxes, but, as but, well as yeah. the, the informal sector. Look, I, I so we're, 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 yeah. we're also solving yeah. that 
no, no, nobody disagrees with that. Nobody dis I think it's the quantum at which it was introduced that. I think 1% would have dealt with, uh, with um, a lot of the um, issues of exemptions and the rest of it. You know, like those exemptions, and we, Bongai started off by talking about the p politics, the political nature of your job. You've had to go and give exemptions to um, the guys down at the tobacco floors. You know, so I, I need their forex. You need their forex, right? But why? It's and, not and, politics. And, you, and you've done Animal that. Farm. And, Some and of us you, are more equal than others. Yeah, no, no, I need their yeah. forex. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not giving me forex. <laughs> and, and, and donors, it's the same thing too, because that actually angers me that you go and give an exemption to the donors. No, why should it? Why should it anger you? Because these are people who are contributing. But Out they're going to pay regardless. No, they're I'll, going I'll to pay regardless. No, no, but they're going see, to bring their money for Sakla and I die and this, that, and the next thing. These are privileged people, no, no, and no. you're just letting they, them off the hook by frankly, saying, oh, you don't have to pay the 2%. Frankly, they're doing you a favor. They don't have to give us, send us taxpayers' money from their taxpayers outside. Mm -hmm. They are doing that out of charity. Let's be honest about it. No, 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 but, 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 it's not, but the thing is, the people, yes, amongst the, the, the guys at the top, yeah. okay, the, from, a, from a country to country scenario, but the people who are mostly working in these NGOs, they send their kids to private school, they've got fleets of combis and the rest of it, okay, because they're getting that US dollar. They're not poor people. Mm -hmm. And they've gone and made representation to you to get another exemption, you know, which, which I, which, okay, that's my beef. Anyway, I can ask another but question. It's a, it's a very important beef. I like that beef because really it's, it's about incentives. We, we want that forex inflow. So we don't you're going to get it regardless. It. You're going to yeah. get it regardless. Yeah, yeah, They're going to bring the next cyclone. They'll come. Don't worry. <laughs> let's, 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 John is talking about international John. community. International yeah. community is essential. Let's, 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 let's talk about the international community. Let's talk about the, 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 the Paris Club. Let's talk about G7. G7 is about to meet now. We know that the next year America is going to be heading up G, G, G7. Uh, we've had a lot of political statements that have been made by our government mm -hmm. of late in reference to what's going on with the current disturbances that we had and the American government. What is our relationship? Because it's a difficult rope that you have to walk. Because we need their money, like you said. Mm -hmm. They can choose and we need their support. How are you walking that tight rope right oh, now? The, the relationship with the U.S. is very strong uh, and really has gotten better over the years. And, and you can see the, the response of the U.S. when it came to Cyclone and I. Uh, they gave quite a bit of money. But also their response uh, when uh, we, through the humanitarian uh, aid appeal, um, uh, you know, they gave uh, 45 million US dollars. So, so if you're talking about the, the working the talk on the monetary donations, you know, you can see that that, that relationship is strong. Is strong. Of course, we, it goes through up, ups and downs. And I think uh, that those instances that you are, you, are, you are talking about are some of the downs. Uh, hopefully, those things can be managed and we can get back to, 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 to a better position, uh, uh, frankly. Uh, but we are, we are rebuilding a relationship, we are re-engaging. It's not just the US, it's Europe, it, it, it's everywhere. So we are rebuilding our relations everywhere. And this relation, this, this has an impact on our ability to clear our debts, our areas, to keep the aid flows going, but also to, uh, to woo uh, uh, investments from investors from, the, from those, those countries. So it's quite a complex agenda, but also it's a, it's a comprehensive agenda. We'll go through ups and downs, but the trajectory is mainly up. Okay, now let's understand some of these interactions as well. First of all, does Zimbabwe need a bailout package, yes or no? Yes. How much? Two billion dollars. Two billion dollars. What would you do with those two billion dollars? It's basically to clear, help clear the areas and get a bit of change in the, in the pocket to support the uh, balance of payments. Now let's understand, talk about debt a bit. We have uh, the RBZ overdraft that exists right now. How exactly are you going to deal with that RBZ overdraft? Is it going to be a bond? I've dealt with the overdraft already. To, How exactly? You know, I've, we've reissued, uh, uh, we've issued long-term paper in the market, which is how you deal with it. So if you go onto the overdraft window, you'll find a balance of zero at the moment because it's all been securitized, converted to long-term instruments. TBs? Uh, savings bonds. Savings bonds. This is the 7% RBZ bond which now. 10%. 10 percent moved to 10%. The yes. Originally, uh, yes. And extends to about what? Between 5 to 15 years in terms of longevity. Uh, the interest rate and the quantum of bills? How do you mean the... As in the, the rate, oh, the rate is at 10% billion. and it's $3 billion. It's $3 billion. Yeah. Mm. So, that's, so, that's what so, it is. <clears throat> so just, just carrying on from that, you know, um, we've heard a lot about the $1.8 billion and this, that, and the next thing. We've actually heard about it since Minister Chinamasa's time. And I know that you knew in the seat and you've only really been there for a year. But 
in the time that this has been talked about, and uh, Happy is probably better at uh, reminding me, but I think this started, what, 2015? Mm -hmm. Hey, Happy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it seems like we're no further down the road to, to, to actually getting that, that two billion. Do you, do, oh, do you mean you, in terms of the arrears uh, clearance? Yeah, the arrears clearance. Oh, oh, if you remember that, the, we had remember we had the Lima plan. Yeah, yeah. And the, the progress was made on that. Mm. But then there was a hitch because it wasn't quite clear then whether the, the resources we're trying to, to, to mobilize, acquire, to yeah. mobilize mm. were concessionary mm. or non-concessionary, mm. were they really available or not. Mm. So that plan, as was constructed, then kind of ran aground. Mm. So we've resuscitated it after we relaunched the TSP uh, uh, in, in Bali last year, and then uh, we are working with the, mm. the G7 countries to, to source that that mm. two billion. So so well, it's still part of the old road roadmap, but with the mm. with the detour. No, look, I mean, I mean, John and, always and used to say it's it's not an event; it's a but it's is a it journey. A wish? I think that's the yeah. thing. Is it a wish for you to get help from mm. G7, or there's actually a plan in place? Because with what's happening now and what the Western countries who make up the G7 have said. It doesn't look like Zimbabwe might actually get anything from the G7. No, no, I don't think we should rule that off completely. No, no, no. Remember that the part of the plan is, is really, uh, in fact, let me put it this way. This IMF staff monitoring program is part of the plan. We cannot access those resources and, 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 ex mm -hmm. and have a debt restructuring without successfully completing the s &P. But, uh, but I think the G7 wants the reform, the political reform, and that's where your hands are tied because you can go and negotiate a package and then we see a little bit of heavy handedness last Friday and it kind of scuttles your, um, all your efforts. Uh, you know, they, they, as I said, there'll be ups and downs. Mm. There'll be ups and downs. But the, the trajectory is mainly up. But how about the, the issue about Tiposa being repealed, replaced by mob? Mm. And then IPA will be replaced, replaced and replaced by, we repealed and replaced by three bills. Mm. There will also be electoral reforms mm -hmm. uh, in line with, uh, you know, whatever the EU mm -hmm. and the US said about our elections. And then also, uh, with respect to the, the, the US Commission. demands are very so, clear. They want those reports. They want those reports, reports and yeah. they want people prosecuted for January and August. They want all the reports going back to the Kurundi times. That's what they keep asking for. And it's like um, almost this falls on deaf ears. I, I, look, I'm not aware of those, yeah. uh, of those uh, reports, nor the requests, I must say. What I'm aware of is the legislative agenda in terms of POSA IPA, mm. and that I'm alive to in a way, and some electoral reforms. The other reports I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of. As I said, that my, my, my assessment is that the relationship with the West is actually, the trajectory is generally up. Mm. Uh, but of course, there are ups and downs, but generally up. Mm. And we are performing on economic reforms, and we are going through a transitional period of pain. Uh, but as I say, that all the major macro decisions should be concluded by year end. After that, it's just fine tuning. Then, by the way, we'll then start focusing on productivity, the <laughs> uh, jobs, and competitiveness. I repeat, jobs, productivity, competitiveness. So you'll find us talk about uh, that even in the next budget. But, I'll be emphasizing but, 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 more but, but, that, but, but, that but, about these macro but With 12% inflation now, and you are concentrating on the month, but let's we imagine we've got 12% this month. But if the exchange rate keeps moving out the way it is, we're going to get 12%, 10%, whatever. And then by this time next year, you're going to have a compounded inflation rate of over 100%. You're the, you're the scholar of mathematics. The data is whatever it yeah, is. So yeah. the numbers are whatever they yeah. are. It's not that we were, we're not making them up. All we're saying is that is, is calculate the right numbers. Mm. Use the right But the government knowledge. does That's that. All. The, government's, right. the government's agency calculates the numbers. The Indeed. private ones... Hanky, he's on 600% or whatever. And, and I've pointed out that I'm not in agreement with methodology mm. because it uses the, the asset prices as a base for, you know... Okay, what's the price of a loaf of bread? Let me finish. To inferring prices on, on you know, consumption commodities. It's not the same thing. What do you do with the risk premium on share prices? What's the price of a loaf of bread? Uh, it is whatever it is. So? $6.50, <laughs> okay? So? Mm -hmm. So it was $1.00. Um, this time last year, that's six hundred and fifty percent or five fifty percent that most people. No, pay. no, no. It is look, not look, six dollars. Look, look, look it at, is six Zimbabwe dollars. Yeah. Look, look at look at the price of. A so, so last fuel. year it was one U.S. dollar. 
Okay, more than one US dollar. No, what, 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 what is one US dollar in last year in this time? Mm. Multiply that by, mm. by, by 10. So it was 10 US dollars. Yeah, 10 in Zimbabwe in ten, dollars. It's gone down. 10 Zimbabwe yeah. dollars last year. Mm. Now it is in 6 US Zimbabwe terms, dollars. Gone down. So the price of, of bread has gone down mm. in, in whether they're looking at US dollars mm. or Zimbabwe dollars. It's gone down. Okay. And that's the confusion about year to year inflation. If I think it, a few if, people if disagree you do with year that. on year inflation, you confuse people even more mm. because you're going to get to negative but inflation. But that's international standard, Minister. Oh, oh, that's I, I, I'm, I'm happy to publish yeah. negative year on year inflation mm. for the next six in months. In dollars, you could. In, in, you, you'll be very unhappy. Yeah. Let's, in dollars, let's, you could. Let's, let's, then you say, we don't I, believe let's, you. Let's, 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 Minister, let's, we don't believe you. <laughs> How can it be negative? <laughs> that's why I'm saying that your issue mm. uh, is, is wage compression. Mm. That is your issue. Mm. All that has happened for now is exchange rate translation of mm. prices. Mm. Uh, exchange rate yeah, in, from mm. US dollars to, to Zimbabwe dollars, mm. but the, the issue is that wages haven't caught up with that. So mm. it's a wage compression, wage erosion mm. issue. And, and also there's an element of imported inflation which mm. we have to accept. With, if you look at the supermarket mm. basket on average, 45 mm. to 50% of our basket mm. is no, imported no, basket. No, no, it's, it's, we have to it's, accept it's that. The right. overall inflation includes the imported. Right. Okay, so yes. let's, let's try yeah. to wrap up. I, I know mm. time is, a, is, a, is an yes, issue, yeah. but I think what, what we need to talk about is it would be remiss of us to talk about two issues. Quickly, Monetary Policy Committee, when is that going to happen? Uh, before year end. Before year end. Okay. We'll be betting a bottle of wine on that red wine. And of course, Africa Zimbabwe. two bottles of wine now. Africa Zimbabwe. We talk about the special relationship. How much do we owe Africa Zimbabwe? Oh, it's about 800 million uh, US dollars. And the letters of credit, what are the current value of letters of credit floating in the market right now? Oh, we've got about, about uh, 300 million worth of letters of credit. To That's Africa Zimbabwe. Oh, oh, not just Africa Zimbabwe. I mean, I mean all. Oh. And I think uh, but part of the Afro Zimbank exposure is also uh, includes an element of, uh, the of credit. Yeah. I think the next thing, Minister, is why are we not getting information to say this is how many LCs on the market, this is how much we owe Africa Zimbank, these are the kind of term sheets that are, you know, we talk about, you talk about interest and you've, you've inflation. You've given us a very good uh, definition of why you are but, unhappy but, but with inflation. But why do you want to know? about what we are borrowing from a specific bank. We want to know what we're borrowing from everyone. No, no. Because I, we, I we worry. We confidence is the issue. Confidence is the issue. Uh, <laughs> no, the, well, let's I, I got specific. you. I think there's an interest in a specific bank. And I don't, and I don't think, think, think that's correct. Mm. Really should be about what is our external exposure. If there's a specific bank that likes Zimbabwe or has been so helpful to Zimbabwe, we should be celebrating that. Because and also somewhat cautious type, to understand type, type maybe there's a special relationship. No. Mm. It's an, it's, a, it's an African bank. Mm. That's a special uh, relationship. We should celebrate that because you, it's not easy to, to get credit out there for Zimbabwe. Mm. So I don't understand why people so, get so fixated about this specific bank or not. It should be about overall exp exposure. Are we managing things properly or are we not? Are we increasing our debt position? Are we not? That should be the, the discussion. But I would like the discussion to move on. I want it to move on to sector productivity. The potential we have in the mining sector We'll be launching you know, a mining sector action strategy. The position we have in agriculture, in the manufacturing sector, that should be the conversation and, and job creation beyond that, but, productivity. But just let me stop so, you there. Because again, really, uh, having done, I, I feel oh. that the currency issues, oh. okay, in my we view, I put them behind <laughs> me. Okay. We, but, we are done with currency but, 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 and would, currency would you, would you agree that the biggest challenge facing, facing this country at the moment is power? Is the big yeah, challenge without a doubt, and how and and because the thing is, we were told it was going to get better, you know, and we we're told in the matrix again today it's going to get better. It hasn't really. It's got slightly better, mm -hmm. but not good enough, and that's what's really impacting on the factories. So you can talk about productivity and this, that, and the next thing, right? But those guys can't produce a lot of the time. But we're doing something about it. But first of all, let's recognise that we have a severe. Uh, uh, you know, a power shortage. Mm. Those are the facts. No one yeah. is denying that. Why? Uh, because the water levels in Kariba are low. Why? Because of the drought, uh, El Nino situation. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a lack of yeah. investment for the last 10 years. Yeah. That's really the reason we right. have the problem. Let, 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 let me carry on from there. At the moment, these low water levels, we're not getting power, mm. enough power to Kariba. Those are the facts right now. Mm. There may be reasons why we could have mitigated, we could have done that uh, well, 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 well and good. But what are we doing about it? The only way to deal with that is to import power. Mm. And we're doing everything we can to put, we put a structure in place with a supply from South Africa, which is ESCOM, so that we can continue to receive power. Mm -hmm. We're doing the same in Mozambique, but also we're talking to suppliers in other countries where so that we diversify sources of imported power. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. look, so, so, so look, we'll never years, get so. back to 
where we should be in terms of power supply because it costs money to import, mm -hmm. you know, and the shortage of foreign currency just costs money to import. We just have to work our way through this difficult time. The government is doing everything it can to import power. Look at what we've done with the pricing we've said for mining companies that are exporting, uh, pay for power in US dollars, and that's just to manage the, the, the import bill uh, for power so that that, that is ring fenced and then they're out of the demand you know, equation. Then we focus on other disagrees sectors. with that. I'm sorry? If you, I don't think anybody disagrees with that. If, you are, if your exports are 100% US, then I don't think anybody's got a problem with people paying for their power bills in US. Sure, you sure. know, that's not, a, that's not an issue. Timeline for solution. Huh. When will we get normal power? I, I, I do not think we'll get normal power this year. Yeah. What will restore normal power is more water and carry back. I think fair, that's what it will take. Because the, the, the other solutions, such as investment, that always takes time. Uh, to get a solar plant, solar power working, we're looking at six, nine months. You know. so, so, so we're going to see this massive ramp up of investment in solar. It's happening. Even some of you have got it in your households. That's also part of, part of the equation. Uh, but really the issue is about, is about Kariba filling up. Uh, that's what we'll solve. So you've got to pray to Mr. Gavani for that one. The, the, the long term <laughs> is about the capacity we're trying to, to relieve them. You won't get seven and eight, you won't get one to six, getting Kariba South uh, back up, and then uh, Batoka Gorge, and the other power stations that are, are, are sprouting up. But that takes time. So there's a two year, three year type you know, horizon. Okay. Let's, let's wrap it up. What three things other than power keep you awake at night? And what three things make you happy and proud? Food for your security. Time? Uh, power, uh, food security keeps me awake because again, uh, uh, you know, we have to import food. Well, donor friends will bring that. Don't worry. <laughs> no, 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 but they want to know that you are putting your, you have skin in the game. Mm. They, they're not just kissing. They're saying skin uh, in the game. Money anyway. they, they, then we meet you halfway. So that that keeps me uh, uh, awake at night. The, the other thing is obviously the issue around wages. Uh, can we sure we can manage the demand for higher wages? That that that, that keeps me awake at night. The other thing, you said three things. Behind power. things. The other thing is the is exchange rate stability, naturally. I'd like to see a more stable exchange rate. I think it's fair to say the last few weeks has been, you know, okay compared to previous weeks by comparison. And that's the kind of, you know, region where I want to remain in terms of, uh, in terms of my, my, my headaches. Uh, in terms of what I, I, it keeps me asleep at night rather than awake, uh, in other words, happier, is obviously the state of the fiscal consolidation the state of the, the, the current account uh, situation. Uh, that, that keeps me, uh, but also, I think that the remarkable progress we've made overall on the economic reform agenda, and the excitement that I see in the microeconomy, which is your sectoral economy, the mining sector, the tourism sector, and so forth. When I think about that potential, that makes me slip immediately after thinking about it. And that's where the potential lies. As I said, going forward, uh, our conversation should be about jobs, issue about productivity, issue about competitiveness. We, we, we should put these you know, macroeconomic reforms behind us and, and move on. Minister, thank you, thank you very much uh, for being frank with you. your answers. And thank you for all for us joining us here on Tambara. And uh, we look forward to bringing you more insightful messages and get the messaging right of what government is doing. And also some of these questions we've also been able to field from people who regularly follow. And these are the questions that people out there really want to know and understand. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you for following Tambara. Thank you for the energetic Thank you. conversation. <laughs> <laughs>